Welcome to another episode of TC2000 training video series. Part of a full series of training tutorials brought to you by DayTraderSetups.com Today's episode is on building quick alerts on your charts. Our video today is on creating quick alerts. I'm creating a set of alerts that I'm going to place on my chart and the purpose of these alerts is I want to know, I'm watching the chart, I'll put it on a bigger time frame. Uh, let's say I'm watching this chart and it's going down right here and I think it's going to turn back up. I've been watching it and it's like you know, I wish this thing would break this high. And it keeps going down. So finally, you're going to move on to something else. But before you do, you say, I would really like to know when this breaks up. I'm going to tighten these down and spread these candles out a little bit for you. So you're right in here and you give up on this. So what you want to know is I want to know when the price gets greater than this candle or the price gets greater than this candle and you really want to know if it gets greater than the high of those candles so the alert system I'm creating here I'll just be able to say close greater than close one well that's not going to tell you a whole lot because if this is going down it opens up if it goes down a little bit comes back up it would be an alert but in this case if we're trying to set the alert for breaking back up we want to know if close is greater than high one if we're already down here we want to be greater than this and it may be the next bar it could be three more bars once you set this alert it's there and you just set it for the day so it's going to go off when it's true it's going to go off one time and not repeat itself so you don't miss this trade when this stock turns back around. So if it was right here, I would want to know when close is greater than the high of this candle, maybe. So I've already created this alert. I don't even I don't have any of these lit up. I'm going to place them right under here. It's going to take up a little tiny space on the chart, and I'm going to show you how to build a couple of more, and then we're going to move them. I just have to say close greater than high one. Set alert. It's a true or false statement. Zero is false. 100 is true. So all I need is greater than zero. So I just click, click. My alert's now created. I say, well, maybe it's, I want it high, greater than high too. Click, click. So I've done both of those. And to show you what I'm going to, I'm going to Turn this back on for just a moment. So this is high twos, the one we've got lit up here. Right there. Close was greater than high two. Close also greater than high one. Maybe you're watching right here in this base. Say, Man, I wish this thing would break on back out. I'd get in it. Close is greater than high two. When a candle takes out the high two bars ago, maybe you're setting it right in here and you want to take out that high. Well, it ends up going off over here. See at the bottom where it lines up? Shifted from true to false, false to true. It took out the high this bar. But anyway, it took out two high goes. So we're going to go back and turn that off because we don't need to see that. And the reason we don't need to see that because if we got them all lit up, they're just on top of each other. They don't mean anything. All you want to know is the answer to the question at the time it happens. So you don't need to see this. And that's why it's going to take, out, take up such a small amount of room in our chart. So I took this, created the same alert, I just put the close, I'm not looking at it, and I said it just named it quick alerts because I want to name this group right here. I don't care where the price is, I've just used that as my tagline. So then I put in 
four going up. So now we're going to add the going down ones. We're using a true false statement. I generally use this indicator, which is just a plot of the close, the highs, or whatever. Or it could even be a the plot of a Bollinger Band, for that matter. This is a true false statement. If you try to build something in here and you get an error or you don't get a plot, then you probably need to be using this one. A lot of times you get an error, so it must be Bollinian. Uh, or if you try to do it in here and it tells you vice versa. So it's usually one of these two. We're using the true false indicator, so we're going to bring that down. We're going to get about three of them on this chart. Four of them actually need four. It's just popping them in here at the bottom. We're just adding them. Now, I'm going to build me a series of the close less than. So I'm just going to grab this first. I'm going to copy that. Control C. Hit OK. Now we're going to go down here and start building these. We want to have close less than close one. In this case, we're going the other direction. So we'll copy that again. I'm going to paste it right down here. That's a, it's a uh, short kind of indicator or alert. So we're going to color it red. And all we're coloring it red for is so that it'll be red right here. We don't want to see it, so we're going to turn that down. We're done with that one. Next, we're going to go close, less than close, two. Copy that, paste it, to label, we're labeling here when we cut post it down here. Turning it off. Oops, I forgot to turn it, color it red. Colored it red. Now I can go ahead and Move this up right here. It's in with this. Scaling is something else that's important. Uh, by just hitting OK, it just scaled it with that. Sometimes when you're adding things up here, you need to scale them with the price as you add them because it's gonna, it don't know whether it's supposed to scale them with these other items or not. So every time you move something from down here up to your main part of your chart, you want to scale it with that. I'll show you something else I added here a few minutes ago. This is just for an alert of the open price. Just, just the open. That's all it is. Now, I'm not showing it on the chart. I don't need to see it because it's just adding a new line right here, that little green line. I don't need to see that. I don't have to see it to use it. When I created this, when I first put this up here, my scaling was just with the, the price. So when I put it up, scaled it with price, and then I came in here and said, okay, I want to set an alert. Greater than what? And here was my choices, the price, the Bollinger Band, the pivot, the MOBO, or my deviation lines. It didn't give me any choices of these. Well, really, I wanted to know if I'm breaking up through a new high. So to get that accomplished, I went in, I went to my scaling. That box jumped off the screen. Couldn't see it. See if I can get it back in here. Okay, scaling. I put it on 78 high. That's my green line. It's probably right in here, 119.10. If you look in this little box, it says 78H, 119.10. I'll show you again. That was my 78 bar high. So when it broke up right here, now my 78 bar high went up. So I'm watching it down in here, and I want to know when it breaks this line. But I want to know when it's opens above the line, it may hit it and reject it like it did back in this area. So I put me a quick alert up here and once I changed it to scaling with 78 high, now my choice is for set an alert are now 78 high plus it still has the others it had. So I can say crossing up or above, whichever one I want. It's only going to go off one time. So, okay, I want to know when it's crossing up 78 bar high. I 
hit that and create alert. And I just created those using these same PCFs, except for since it's not doesn't have a greater than a less than statement in it, it's just the one that's right here. It's just the open or the close or the high. You can have high greater than high one. If you're using the greater than, you got to go here. But if you just want to have it where I placed it up here, where it's just going to be the value greater than whatever you decide to use it for, you want to use the one with, without the, the true false in it. So let's finish this up and we'll wind this video up. Got about two more things to do here. We're doing uh, less than low one and low two. Less than low. I like caps when I do these. One. They're not required though. OCD, I guess. And I forgot to color it red. So we'll make it red. I got one more to go. Okay, now I accidentally just hit the move. I don't want to move it. Escape button. Get you right back out of that. I want to go to edit. Finish what I was doing. Load two. Copy. Paste. Turn it off. Color red. I'm going to move this over this one. Now, here's another little tool. I'm going to move, I want to move these up with this group first. I don't have to move them one at a time. When I select move here, it says I want to move the, the one indicator. I want to move the pane. I want to move the pane. I want to overlay it right here. So now I've got all these together. And one of them I still got turned on for some reason. So let's see which one it is. And we got it's probably going to be one of these first two. It was the last one. That was a step got to do well I don't know which one it is it's one of them so we'll just figure it out it's not that one it must be this one then yep okay they're all off again we're gonna move the pane we're gonna overlay here so now we got all these together, and if they were all lit up, you'd see all these crazy bars down here that we don't need to see. So I finished this. Now I want to move the whole pane, and I want to insert it right under here because it's going to be taking up very little space. Click here, move pane, insert. Now we got all these values out here popped up. We don't care what they are, so you just hit the minus button. That just went away. The only thing it's plotting is the quick alert over here, which is actually the close. So we're just going to tighten this back up. Actually, need to open. it'll squinch your stuff up sometimes, so you may have to readjust. I want to open this one back up. So I don't need to see. All I need to see right here is that. I don't need to see anything else. I've kind of got my stuff back where I like it at. And now I'm going to say, save chart as. You can rename it in this case. I want it named the same as I had it. So now I'll save that. And now I can, on any time frame chart, I can be on a 15 minute. I'm watching it right here. I think it's going to break up. It starts back down. I want to know when it comes up here. We're going down. So I really want close greater than high one. So you can take out the high. This one, so that means if you set it here and this bar reverses, you say close greater than high one, it's going to be when it crosses this plot price. If you say close greater than high two, then if it opens another bar, it's going to take out the high of this bar. If it goes down two more bars, whatever the two prior bars was, it's going to alert you when that happens. Just hit it, set alert, alert, because it's greater than zero. It's true. So it's just bam, bam, very quick. You don't have to if you do it up here, then you got to come down here, set an alert. What do you want to know? Well, I want to know when I'm. You don't have a closed one. You know, you got to go to price history, and then you got to say crossing up what value. It's real complicated, slows you down. So you got to put the price of the previous candle or two bars ago. So the way we've just done this, we got a quick alert. 
close, set alert, greater than high one, bam, we're done. Boom, boom, next. That's all you got to do. And I'm going to show you how to use this now. Take that completely off my screen. I hit the... Well... Try it on this one. Set an alert. Okay, we got it in here. We're doing the, the one that says... Still says open. I got them red and green. The reason I got them on there twice, this one's set scaled with 78 low. So that's why I had to do two of them. So I want to come in here. I've got the open price. I'm on a particular candle. You can even do your pivot points. Now I only have the pivot plotted. I like to do this a lot. If you got the pivot lit up, I'm just going to plot a couple of more right here just for demonstration purposes. Let's say you're watching this right here. You say, man, I wish this thing would get above the pivot, or R1. It you know, might be your pivot line at that time, whatever it is. Or right here. But I want to know it closed, so that means I want to know it opened above. Open, set alert, Here's your pivot. We know it's R1 we're trying to get over. Above R1. Set alert. So I'm sitting here watching all this. And now, if I were right here when I did it, when it closes a bar and opens one above R1, it's going to go off. It's actually going to go off right here when this candle opens. So that's why I have it up here. So I can do it when I'm breaking a new high or breaking the low or I can tie it into these I can tie it on the Bollinger band I'm watching it right here and or here's your MOBO band now, I have alerts down on my charts for this crossing the MOBO closing above the MOBO but you could do open above the MOBO just for an alert I want to know when this thing I know if it opens above the MOBO it closed the previous line above the MOBO so you can use it in that manner too set an alert Here's our MOBO above the top channel. Create alert. That happens, it'll let you know. It could be down here doing all this chopping. That concludes our video today. Thanks for watching our TC2000 training series brought to you by DayTraderSetups.com. And traders, don't forget if you're a beginner or you've been trading and you want to place your account on hold and start paper trading do you get a handle on this and get you a daily profit pattern going, you can go to papertrading.daytradersetups.com. It's going to take you to this page. It tells you a little about the plan. You click to go to TC2000 or you can link there from our TC2000 training page. There's also a link to take you to TC2000. And you're going to land on this page right here. You want to sign up for this gold package, $29.99 a month. And you're going to receive $25 discount from Day Trader Setups when you set up your account. And when you get there, you're going to want to add the $14.99 U.S. real-time data plan. So you have a total bill of $44.98. You're going to get $25 off your first month. And you'll be paper trading with power, 5,000 symbols, scanners, charts, no, no, no data limitations on your symbols. Thanks. Just wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching our videos and ask you to subscribe to our channel. You can, of course, use the subscribe button or you can type join.daytradersetups.com to subscribe. Also, you can follow us on Twitter at Daytradersetups and visit our website at daytradersetups.com.